Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudabuyo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15W47C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. And in this video, um, the ninth of my sequence of videos on item elevator design, I am going to be talking about how to combine different options uh, for the four different components of an item elevator into a working item elevator. Uh, uh, but before I do that, I want to quick mention uh, one of the activators uh, that I had forgotten to add in the last video, and that is a BUD, um, a block update, de uh, update detector. Uh, and a block update de detector can be used in conjunction with string, uh, and that is because a string causes block updates when, items, uh, when entities pass through it, uh, even if the string is not part of a tripwire circuit. Uh, now the key here uh, for using a bud is that um, the an item passing through the string is actually going to cause two block updates, uh, one when the item enters the string and one when it exits. So you saw that there were two activations there. Uh, and that can complicate the circuitry, makes it a little bit difficult to deal with, the, with these buds here. A um, uh, couple of different notes uh, uh, regarding this. Um, uh, one, you will have to use a self-resetting bud, of course. Uh, and two, um, you're going to have to deal with some of the peculiarities of dealing with tripwire. Uh, in particular, the, uh, the string is going to need a, a non-item colliding block uh, on at least one side, so you will have to have at least two uh, blocks of bare ice usually not too much of a big deal. Um, you can also use uh, regular ice um, uh, rather than packed ice, um, uh, but um, yeah, so one more option. It's just a little difficult, uh, in my opinion, to deal with the uh, timings uh, of the bud. So uh, that said, um, let's go on to uh, the topic for this video here, and that is combining uh, different components into an actual item elevator. The idea is how do you get something like this uh, from something like this? Um, so we're just starting with a, an ice line water channel. Uh, I'll add the water in a little bit here. Uh, going to a tower, and so I want to convert this in, into an item elevator um, based on my knowledge of the different components here. Now, uh, there are four questions that I need to ask uh, when I'm designing one of these things. Um, the first is whether or not I'm going to be okay with the noise. <laughs> and, and that's because some of the different options for the components uh, make more noise than others. There's a big difference between the amount of noise uh, produced by a trapdoor versus the amount of noise produced by a piston. Uh, so um, noise is going to be a factor. If it's something that's far away from my, uh, my base, you know, in an automated farm somewhere, uh, then maybe I don't need to worry too much about the noise, but if it's um, something that I'm going to be tossing items to into every once in a while as part of my uh, uh, base's storing s storage system, uh, then maybe I'm not going to want to listen to to loud uh, loud mechanisms. Uh, so that's going to be uh, the first question. How how loud is it? Am I going to be okay with the noise? Uh, the second question is, how laggy is it going to be? Um, uh, how much lag is going to be introduced by this item elevator, um, uh, you know, in comparison to the other stuff that I have, or, you know, how many, how many of these item elevators do I intend to make? Uh, that's all going to come into play with respect to how much lag uh, or potential lag these things can introduce. Uh, and uh, things like um, pistons are, are have the potential to produce a lot more lag than things like trapdoors. So uh, there's the the noise lag trade-off there if you, if you want. Um, uh, things that are generally uh, noisier are going to uh, introduce less lag, uh, and vice versa. Uh, okay. So the um, uh, the third question uh, that I need to ask is how many different kinds of items uh, are going to be in this stream? Uh, if, uh, if there's more than one, uh, then I have an additional choice for a regulator, that's the cobweb. Uh, but if, there is, uh, or if there's only one, then I have a, a cobweb. If there's more than one, then I can't use the cobweb for, as a regulator, so I'll have to go with the mechanism. Uh, so that's the third question. And, and the fourth question uh, is not actually uh, what the volume of the stream is. That, that's, um, uh, that is uh, important, but more for the collection of items at the top of the tower, which is not, uh, not something I've covered. Um, instead, uh, with respect to the operation of the, elevated, uh, of the elevator itself, what's more important is the time between items coming down the stream. So what's the expected minimum amount of time between items? What's the expected maximum amount of time between items? Uh, I'm going to want to know the, the expected timing in order to make sure that all of my mechanisms are working properly in conjunction with each other. 
so and uh, to that end um, uh, there's a simple clock here this is just a, a standard etho clock um, you can use this for testing your streams here uh, the difference between um, this uh, uh, this clock here and, and a normal etho clock is, is this the addition of this hopper here uh, so these two hoppers here they are empty uh, and all of the items are actually in this hopper here uh, and this hopper is actually going to um, be deactivated it would be powered uh, whenever this hopper is um, not empty. So this hopper will be active only when this hopper is empty. Uh, and this hopper is only empty uh, for a few redstone ticks, uh, which means that this hopper will only be able to push one item into this hopper at a time. Uh, so for each cycle of, the cl of this clock, it gets one more item, uh, which means that each cycle of this clock um, will be slightly longer uh, and um, I've added a two tick repeater here um, uh, just to, just to um, uh, use these double pulses here so I've got uh, a pulse coming off of each side of the clock uh, and uh, one pulse is lengthened by two redstone ticks that that makes the each pulse coming out of this clock to this dropper uh, a little bit longer than the previous pulse and we can hear that with respect to the uh, activation of the dropper you can hear it's getting slower and slower and so if you if you uh, use some something like this to insert items into the water stream um, that will help you test the timings of your mechanisms um, uh, okay so um, now uh, let's go ahead and choose some components here um, so the the for the barrier block that's the first one I'm going to choose um, the obvious choice for that at this point is uh, is the upside down stairs uh, and that is because uh, there are there are only uh, two options for uh, for the barrier block, you've got uh, blocks pushed in by a piston, or you've got cobblestone walls and upside down stairs. And the upside down stairs uh, gives us a lot more uh, a lot more options for what we can use the um, uh, as the uh, levitator block. So um, this is a superior choice over the cobblestone wall in most circumstances, uh, and it is a non mechanism. So uh, probably we're going to go want to go with this. Now this does require that we have items aligned in the stream because uh, they need to be aligned all the way over to the left. Let me go ahead and turn this off here. Um, the items need to be aligned all the way over to the left. Uh, and, um, for, uh, and as a consequence, um, we're going to need to either put a bend in our water stream or if we don't want to put a bend, uh, we're going to have to put a, uh, a lateral water flow in here and I'm going to go ahead and put in a lateral water flow. So let me just add a little bit of an extension here. Okay, so um, here's the water source block here, um, and here's the water source block here. Um, it, we need to make sure that um, the distance is correct here. So here's a count of three blocks to the intersection, and here's a count of two blocks. Um, this uh, allows the water flow to be diagonal. Obviously, if this is too close, it's going to uh, cause uh, kind of still water at some point here, which is not something that we want. And if it's too far away, um, then uh, um, you're going to get a water flow that actually goes in into the side channel. So it's got to be an appropriate distance. This is pretty good. Um, now, one thing here, though, is that um, if this is a really long ice stream and items are coming down really, really fast, um, then they're going to be coming across this diagonal water flow faster than they can be pushed to the side. So uh, in addition to this lateral water flow for my item alignment, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of a break, just two regular blocks uh, right before the intersection of the two water streams, and that will guarantee that items are going at kind of a normalized pace, slow enough to be pushed all the way over to the side by the lateral water flow. Okay, so I've got my barrier block in, and uh, I've got my lateral water flow to support the barrier block. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and choose the levitator block. Uh, for the levitator block, um, I, I'm, I've decided to use a, a piston uh, device for this. Um, uh, again, if this was, um, uh, if I was really concerned about lag, 
uh, then I might want to um, uh, go with uh, Trapdoor. Uh, that's going to be uh, it's going to have uh, significantly fewer block updates associated with it. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm going to use a piston, uh, and I'm going to use an upside down stairs also for my levitator block. Uh, it was really just for fun because my barrier block is also an upside down stairs. Now for this to be a levitator block, uh, remember that we need to push an upside down stairs in this position uh, right here. Uh, that's going to cause this to become a corner stairs to force items up. Uh, so I need to push this block in here uh, with a piston somehow. I can push it in from the bottom, I can push it in from the side over here, or I can push it in from the side over here or here. Now, the reason why I can push it uh, from the side uh, in line with the water channel is because the, um, the two blocks uh, alongside the stairs here, right here and right here, uh, these do not need to be present uh, for items to go up the tower because they don't count for determining whether the levitator block is surrounded by solid blocks. Uh, so it's okay for this block here or this block right here to be an, extend, uh, a, a, um, an extended piston head. Uh, so I am just going to go ahead and use a piston uh, alongside here uh, because that's going to make my life easier with respect to the wiring. Uh, so this piston is going to push this into place. Uh, also note that even though this is open right here, uh, remember from a previous video, uh, I talked about item alignment and um, items that are aligned in the stream ha that have lost all their lateral velocity are not going to gain it unless they encounter a lateral water flow or, or you know maybe something uh, something else bumping up against them. Uh, and um, that means that uh, items are traveling in a perfectly straight line. So even though this is open over here, items are going to get stuck here. They're never going to fall off the edge. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about items falling out uh, of the uh, of the tower here of, uh, of the levitator block, even though this is open, uh, because they don't have that lateral velocity that would allow them to uh, uh, go off the edge of the ice. Uh, okay, so that's my um, uh, that's my choice for the barrier block and the levitator block. Uh, now I need to choose the regulator and the activator. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and consider both of those together, uh, but I'm going to start with the activator. Uh, now, uh, if you have a really, really high volume water stream and you uh, would have a, a triggering activator like a pressure plate or tripwire going off constantly, then you might want to use a clock as your activator. Um, but normally, uh, the kind of water streams that we're going to have, uh, we're probably going to go with one. We're probably going to want to go with a triggering activator, uh, and that's just simply because that's going to mean uh, fewer block updates, less potential for lag. Uh, and uh, and also less noise in the case of things like uh, uh, pistons and, and trap doors that are being driven by the activator. Now I'm pre placing a pressure plate here. That's the thing that I've decided to use as my activator. Um, usually you're going to want this to be two blocks away from the barrier block, and that's because when I add a water source block here, I have some water flow. If this was only one block away, a water source block here would have no flow, and so it wouldn't uh, contribute to pushing items into the levitator block. If you can put it further away, but the f the farther away that you have it from the levitator block, uh, the more opportunity there is to uh, get timings incorrect. It's it's harder to get the timing correct. So, uh, as close to the barrier bo block as possible, um, but probably two blocks away to get that extra water flow in. Okay, so I'm going to use that as my activator. And um, I'm going to use the position of this uh, for my uh, for my regulator, uh, which I'm going to use a a, um, a piston that is holding back um, a, a countervailing water flow. So I'm going to come out a little bit here. Okay, and this piston I'm going to need uh, to be extended by default and. Uh, uh, and retracted only when items pass over the pressure plate. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a redstone torch here. Okay. Now, um, when I put a block of water, oops, when I <laughs> when I put a block of water here, um, the piston is holding back the water, and when items pass over the pressure plate, uh, it releases that countervailing water uh, water flow to prevent uh, more items from getting through here at, at an inappropriate time. Now, um, one thing to note here is that it's all ice here, uh, and uh, let me go ahead and retract this and toss in an item, and we can see what happens. Uh, the item is going to uh, kind of wobble back and forth 
uh, in the water flow. Uh, and that's because it just keeps sliding on the ice. Uh, so I'm going to notice where the water flows meet and I'm going to add a little bit of a break here right in the middle. And now uh, let's try again uh, with uh, an item. Toss an item in. And now it's really going to get stuck right in the middle. So regardless of whether the, it made it all the way over here and is being pushed by the water or if it's a new item coming down the stream, it's going to get stuck right in the middle, uh, which makes it a lot easier um, uh, uh, to bunch items uh, into the levitator block. Uh, okay, so uh, that is the uh, activation of the uh, levitator, uh, or sorry, uh, the activation of the regulator, and now I need to activate the levitator. Uh, the levitator block, usually you want to keep this closed uh, by default and open only when items are coming in. So I am also going to use an inverted signal with a redstone torch. Uh, now, um, in order to reach that piston, I need a little uh, line of redstone wire. Uh, and now this is closed by default, so um, items can't actually get into that point. And it's going to open up for just long enough with the activation of this pressure plate uh, for items to make it into that back corner. And this is more or less a, a complete item elevator. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, toss an item in and let's see. Okay, and um, we've got one item making it up. Now, uh, one item is not going to uh, do the trick <laughs> for most item elevators. Uh, again, that gets back to the, the fact that you need to consider the timings between items. Sometimes uh, short, uh, short timings between items will work just fine, and long, uh, and long times between items will work just fine. But if you have something in the middle, that's when it will, uh, that's when it will screw up the timings uh, of your mechanisms. Uh, so you do need to um, uh, consider uh, short, medium, and long timings. Again, you can use a clock like this that uh, um, just progressively uh, increases the amount of time uh, between items. Uh, you do that over and over again to see if there are any problems. Uh, this, uh, um, a couple of things to note about this elevator. Um, first, uh, I haven't actually tried it <laughs> with a, a number of different uh, timings. You know, I, I maybe could throw an item or two in here. Uh, but I really haven't checked it against all sorts of different timings, um, uh, and so this is probably not something that you <laughs> that you should use because it's probably lossy. I, I haven't actually uh, fully tested this uh, with something like this or uh, under any kind of other load testing. Um, but the other thing to note about this elevator, um, it, um, even though that I've chosen sometimes a little bit weird components, uh, is that um, there's nothing below the ice of the water stream here. So this, um, there are options that we can select uh, to compose these item elevators that will work down at bedrock. Um, now, the timing of this elevator probably needs some tweaking before it's lossless, um, but um, there are possibilities uh, for, having these, uh, for having these item elevators all the way down at bedrock. You don't necessarily need to have things underneath the, the stream here. Uh, okay, so um, this video is getting kind of long. Um, if there are any, um, uh, uh, if there are enough requests for additional videos on on uh, other subtopics of this, um, I, I may make uh, another video or two. But other other than that, I think that's the end for this series. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note for me in the comments. And thanks for watching.